So even though um, some of you aren't in the classroom and the idea was that we would talk about um, local curriculum, as you've all sort of indicated, um, you've got a, a deep interest in that. And so you can make that conversation suit can't they, Jan Marie? However, yes, of course, just there. adapt it to, to yeah. suit who's in the room. And yeah. those of you who are in a school can share what you're doing, and others yeah. can share what they've, you know, yeah. anything else that they think is relevant. Um, okay, so um, I'll just open the rooms now. Thanks. Uh, kia ora tero, somewhat. We've just had a new. Okay, okay so they'll come up as unassigned. And the others, um, so we're just going into a room and going to talk about um, local, your own local curriculum. So if we'll pop you in a room and if you just have a chat to um, the people in there and they'll sort of catch you up to speed. As you were having that discussion, um, hopefully some key ideas about local curriculum were coming out and some key words. So um, we've got an answer garden. So for those who haven't used one of these before, um, you just type in um, a word or maybe two words at most um, and then click submit and then click in another, type in another one or two words. Um, if you see words that you like and think are related to local curricula, feel free to put them in um, yourself if you see somebody else has typed it because the more times a word is typed in, the bigger it will um, appear. So if you click on um, the answer garden words at the top, or um, if you've refreshed your screen, there's a um, link there, or even just the picture, um, and that'll take you to the answer garden. And yeah, just type in some of the key ideas, just one or, one or two words and submit, and then another one or two words and submit, and so on. Yep, I see we've got integrated there as well. Mindfulness, that's an interesting one. Coming in, it's come up, come up big couple of times. And okay, hopefully you can start seeing a few things here that will um, make connections to um, global citizenship. You know, when we're starting to think about global citizenship, you know, those connections and identity and community, sharing stories are all of those things are going to be really, really important in intercultural awareness. Um, and as we go through, hopefully you'll see some more connections. Um, I think we'll go on to slide nine and Pip is going to talk about that. So um, as Jan Marie said, lots of things will be triggering for you, particularly given that I think most, if not all of you, have been involved in this space in some way, um, have got an interest in it, so obviously have knowledge and understanding. So um, we don't want to spend a whole lot of time going back over some of the, the um, things that might have been explored in previous workshops. But when Jan Marie and I were thinking about this, we were talking about this idea that curriculum is, is really about everything that a learner experiences. And when you think about localizing it, um, you know, in our heads, it's around responding to, um, to the needs and aspirations and identities and languages and cultures and interests of, of your community and your ākonga. And of course, all of those words um, came up very clearly in, um, in that, that um, answer garden, and I'm assuming too in your in your discussions. Um, and I guess the other thing is it's not about coverage. It's not nobody talked about um, the different learning areas and um, you know stuff. It was it was all sort of big picture kind of ideas and themes and concepts that matter to young people. And um, so really, it's about uniqueness and diversity, I suppose. And if we, Mary, if you could just click to the next slide, I think most of you will have seen this slide before. And this is one that, that we have used to um, kind of demonstrate that idea, just because the word global is in there. I think we have this misapprehension that it's about looking outwards. Um, and, and in fact, our thinking is very much that it starts at that local level. 
And you could even have another sort of circle within local community, which is school community. And, and then uh, how does that um, turn from looking inwards and responding to our diversity of our local communities um, and to what that might look like um, when we look further afield within um, Aotearoa, New Zealand, um, Asia Pacific, and then of course globally. Um, and we we just kind of um, wanted to put that out there at the beginning, so that because I think there is there are there sometimes people might think that that it's not that there's a there's a disconnect between global citizenship and our very clear focus on on ourselves in the first instance. Um, and we're going to sort of explore this a bit more um, as we move through. And you're going to have have um, with the opportunity to get back into into breakout groups and talk a little bit more about um, what connections you see emerging and and hopefully being able to put those um, connections into the context of the work that you're doing, um, for example, in environmental education or in Spanish language learning or in in PLD across the board or in the classroom um, in terms of inquiry, which I know um, is something that came through. So Mary, if we can just look at the next slide, what we thought might be quite interesting would be to um, listen to what some young people at Otopi Primary School said. Um, this was um, a group of young people who we um, interviewed, uh, they're in a school, uh, if you want to read more about them, there is a story on our um, Teach APAC weeks website, um, but we talked to them about the things that matter and we talked to them about what they thought global citizenship meant and we asked them to kind of create a story about um, what they think matters and, and what they think they need to do. So we'll just um, have a watch of this and um, and then we'll come back together. This is a rural school. It's a pretty dirt under the fingernails type of culture here. And it's really been obvious to have a program like Garden to Table, where kids grow their own food and then cook the meal from it and then share it with their class and their whanau that come in. You can teach a child about the tikanga of a different culture, but if they eat the food and talk about the plants, it's a really tangible, easy, real example of learning about another culture and remembering it. We can get better understanding and learn about their foods and their culture. One of the foods from the other cultures might become your favourite food of all, and vice versa, so then they can then about us, our foods, our culture, they might love one of our things as well. It's real life lesson stuff for them. The quality of the produce that they end up with on the table is a direct reflection of the soil that it's grown in, the climate that we have here. If we have a dry summer, or um, if there's spray drift from a local orchard or, or something like that, it has a very direct and immediate impact on the quality of the produce that they can see. That shows kids how much of an impact climate it has on what they're doing in the garden. The kids are really interested in what's going on with the planet and global warming and environmental issues. If you know about it when you're younger, then you can get a better understanding about it when you're older and you can actually make a difference. Everyone should learn about what they can do when they can have more of an influence. If like one country is trying to reduce their carbon emissions but all the other countries aren't, it's not going to make a huge difference, but if we like can communicate with each other and everyone stop pollution and stuff, then it will help for climate change a lot more. There's kids who are very keenly interested in what we're doing here at school in terms of waste minimisation, composting, recycling. They are going into the principal's office and saying we need to do a better job of collecting waste from lunch boxes and composting it. We're looking inside the recycle bin and we're seeing stuff that shouldn't be in there that's not recyclable and then educating the rest of the kids. It's really fantastic to see that being driven from the children's interest. Yes, yes Cheryl, they certainly are amazing, aren't they? so powerful to hear from the children we, we um yeah I totally agree and we were just so grateful to have that opportunity um and there are there are 
there's some other clips that kind of demonstrate other aspects of, of the underpinning ideas. I mean, obviously that one was very specifically around the school's um, garden to table, but what I really loved was the way that um, that the, the and that's, she's not a teacher, that woman, but she works with the kids. Um, the way that all those different connections were being made from that one initiative through to all the other elements and aspects. So it was really interwoven. Um, yeah. Um, so we just wanted to um, bookend the sort of this middle bit with some 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 words of wisdom from the young people. And Cheryl, as you say, they are the most powerful storytellers and really they're the ones that we that we should be. Oh, you watched that one. Oh, thank Yeah, yeah. So we've got one coming up from Ngātai Atia as well, which oh, is a great. different spin. Yeah. Um, so um, Mary, just could you just flick onto slide 12? Now, all of you, I think, pretty much will um, will be a, be familiar with um, with this idea, um, particularly as I think just about all of you have been involved with us in some way in the past. But um, one of the things that that we've been thinking a lot about lately is this word responsibility, and um, and it's it's sort of influenced our framework that as a as a team we have developed around a conceptualization of the idea of, of global citizenship education and a way of looking at it and making sense of what it actually means it is just one way of looking at it so um you know and I think you'll see some keywords coming through from there that we don't need to highlight um, you will also be familiar with on slide 13 the uh, the model that we have um, for learning um, and understanding, I guess, the three big ideas, which um, are, are around identity, connections, and responsibility. And interestingly, identity and connections were probably two of the biggest words that came through when you talked about your local curriculum. So already, um, it's it's kind of there. Um, and obviously, the idea of act and change. And then again, if we just flick on to slide 14, and this is just a very quick contextualization. These are the tohu or the, the icons, the, the symbols of um, those three big ideas. And if you look at the words um, that, are, that are in there, you'll also notice some very strong connections around community and connections. Um, and, and that idea of working collaboratively, critical inquiry, um, and I think too, that idea of place and people and environment. So um, again, you don't need to work hard to make those connections. And I think that's what's really important is just to reaffirm that this isn't about doing something more or something extra. Um, it's actually about maybe just being that little bit more explicit and deliberate and making those connections to the the ideas that are at the heart of global citizenship. And I think all of you are doing that. Um, so just before, um, are there any kind of questions or comments? Um, please, we're a small group, feel free to um, just dive in and, and talk about the connections you're making or maybe share some of the things that you're doing. Um, Okay, so really, it, we didn't want to dwell on that because some of you have been at the previous sort of beginners workshop, and this has been something that we have featured in our um, regional um, workshops and so on. So we just wanted to share another clip with you, uh, Mary, on slide 15. And this is from some rangatahi from Ngātai Atia Farakura in Kirikiriro here. Um, again, um, we were just so fortunate to be able to have the opportunity to talk to them and ask them for their, their views on, on some of these ideas. Um, so here they're talking about that idea of global identity and what that might mean to them. It's a blessing knowing that I can refer back to the land, back to the waters, and just the environment around me. It's knowing where I come from, knowing my heritage, knowing the stories of my ancestors. It's a blessing.
now we have like lots of connections through social media and we are able to look at each other's point of view globally. We have to slow down and start understanding other people's perspectives because different doesn't always mean bad. I think there's a strength in diversity. Each culture has their own strengths. Someone else might be doing something different, so we should take the time to watch them and learn from them and then realise that, hey, actually what they're doing is better. It's not about deciding who's right or who's wrong, but rather embracing diversity. Even though we're different cultures, we have a lot of similarities. One thing that's important to us Māori is that we like to bring people together for happy occasions to just celebrate each other. Māori has something to offer the world, whether that can be language-wise, culture-wise, but I do believe Māori have something to offer the world. Because I like to refer back to my kete mātauranga, and that relates to my old Māori, and in it I'm able to bring my ideas as a Māori into other cultural perspectives as well, to maybe help but not change who they are. It comes down to your values. Big one is aroha and manakitanga. People in your life need to teach you how to love people for who they are. Whanaunga tanga is really important to me as a tangata Māori because you build relationships wherever you go. Te ao Māori have been doing these type of stuff way before my time. During my grandfather's time too, Māori's always been open-minded. Mm, so powerful. Mm. And I, I just love the way that that identity came through on the answer garden and, you know, thinking about that, um, the diagram that we showed on slide 10, where this, you're starting off with, um, you know, with your local community, but, it, you know, even coming back to, um, you know, knowing your own identity, your own culture first, and then exploring in your classroom, moving to your school, and sort of, you know, those waves as it goes out and out. Um, and the better you are, are grounded in that um, initial identity, the better you're going to understand um, that diversity throughout the world. I think, um, you know, that idea of Turanga Wai Wai, you know, where I stand, um, and it does start with ourselves, doesn't it? So, um, again, if, you know, we can't say it better than that. <laughs> One, we're going to give you the opportunity to go back into breakout rooms now, and because this is where the the true magic happens, is when when people start talking about what connections they're making and and what they're doing and and what it looks like and how you can enhance and build on that. Um, so the one thing I did want to add, um, and uh, Mary, could you just pop back to slides? Oh, maybe you need to refresh it. Maybe ahead to slide seventeen. I did move this slide. Um, this one, yeah. Um, I'll, um, you'll be aware of the Te Mātai Ahod, which is the, the new um, draft framework for our refreshed curriculum. And um, it's a big weighty kind of document, but there are so many connections in that document to the ideas that are at the heart of global citizenship. It doesn't necessarily use uh, those words global citizenship, but it does talk about citizenship and it talks about responsibility and it talks about um, in the Matai Ahika, which is focusing on local curriculum, it talks about um, learning through relationships with mana whenua and local communities, which is very much what those um, rangatahi from Ngātai were talking about. So I pulled this little piece out. Um, so just take a, you know, 30 seconds to read it. Um, and yeah, take that with you into your conversations. Okay, so over to you, Jan Marie. Okay, so we're going to do a breakout activity now. And um, what we're looking at now is what opportunities that you see for global citizenship education within the framework of your school's unique curriculum, or if you're not in a school, of what possibilities you could see for a school to do that sort of thing. Think about the connections that are being made. Um, and what, how the big ideas of identity, connections and responsibility can be reflected in a local curriculum. Um, and then when, when you come back, I'm just going to get each group to um, report back sort of three key ideas that are coming through from your discussion. So um, I'm going to open 
um, the rooms now. Hopefully we had some good discussion going on in the breakout rooms. What, what I'd like you to do now is maybe just pop into the chat what are the sort of three key ideas that came out of that discussion for you? Ooh, quite a lot about language and culture and identity coming through. Ah, yes, looking at one another culture is a great way of actually um, understanding more about your own. It often mm. isn't until we look um, outside of our own culture that we actually do appreciate what our own culture actually is. Ah, I love that our students are our kaitiaki of our of language, culture, and environment. Yeah, that understanding and promoting here. Yeah. Children know who they are. Um, Trudy, the flower identity task, would you like to talk about that? Um, okay. Um, well, it was um, a, something that I, I learned on the global competency course um, last year. And it was yeah, so simple and very clever the way it was done. So um, helping you know adults, but with children um, know their Id identity and understand it um, because their flowers can all look very similar. You know, so if you, it was taking um, the petals of a flower and each petal you could write about your family, um, your um, uh, hobbies, um, your language, culture, um, different health, uh, education, different aspects, beliefs and values, you know. Um, and then you, so basically it's, it was saying that it doesn't matter where you are, if you move, you're just adding to your, um, adding to your identity, adding to your flowers, you have more petals, hmm. and you don't lose any, any part of your identity. So working with primary school children, um, I thought uh, a good way of doing it would be with chameleons because chameleons adapt to their surroundings, um, changing colour, and it gave them an opportunity to, um, yeah, show their uh, in uh, their uh, individual side um, by writing down aspects of their of their culture and colouring the chameleon. I mean, they were beautifully coloured. Um, uh, Lots of them were like rainbows, but but that was good. That made them all nice and colourful. We put them on um, like a, a little a tree in the in the classroom. Lovely, and and I you know I like what you were saying there about how the, you know finding out about other cultures and adding things in that it adds to and doesn't detract from what you are already, but just makes us all richer for that interaction and those connections. Um, anyone else like to um, talk about anything that they discussed in the room? Or any thoughts that you've had? Okay, well, we've got some great stuff coming through in the chat there. Um, I can see that our time is starting to get close to four, so I'll move on to the next slide. Um, just very quickly, that if anyone um, wants to use um, local curriculum priority and global citizenship focus, um, we can support you to do um, a PLD application to get some free MOE um, funding for that, if anyone's interested, and also the Aotearoa New Zealand histories or social sciences um, aspects of that. Um, slide 21, um, we have more coming up in the series. We have the Understand No Do framework, which of course is the um, framework that's coming through in the curriculum refresh and how that um, fits with the um, global citizenship education uh, framework. And there's lots and lots of ties there um, that can be made. Um, we've got a session on Aotearoa histories and GC Ed um, on October the 27th. Um, Indigenous Peoples and GC on November 10th. Um, and the last one there in this series is the design thinking in action. So looking at um, a design thinking process and what that could actually look like um, when you are actually um, trying to take some, you know, do the action part, the do part um, of global citizenship education.
and thank you all for coming. Um, great to get all of your contributions. Um, we will save all of this lovely stuff that's in the chat um, and include that when we um, send out the, um, when we put the video, um, which will be up on our website and we'll include some of this, um, this lovely chat stuff on there as well. So um, we'll leave it there and hopefully see some more at you in some of the other sessions. Nga mihi noe kia koutou. Thanks so much for all your contributions. And um, yeah, hopefully what we really want to do is create this kind of network of people who can share because that's how much, that's how we learn really about what this looks like in practice. I think for me, it's about um, how we weave this through in a way that it becomes part of our way of being rather than something that we do. Um, and it is often, as we were saying earlier, about being deliberate and explicit and, and making those strong connections between all the, the amazing um, learning that's going on in, in our schools already. So it's really great to have you with us and for you to you know, give up that hour at the end of a long day. Thanks. Thanks so much. All the best. We hope you do actually get some downtime in the teaching recess, non-contact, not holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah,